Well, hello there, you delicious guys and girls, and welcome to another episode of Draw with Mikey. This is our super casual show, for those of you not in the know. Basically, I just fill up the sketchbook with whatever I want, because that's nice. And you guys get to maybe just get on with your own artwork in the background, or your homework, or get on with any projects you guys have got going on. And basically, you get my sweet, dulcet tones all up in your ear rolls in the background. Lovely stuff. And obviously, it's my opportunity to read through your comments and just see what's going on with you guys. So without further ado, there's loads of comments to work through, so we're going to have to dive along as ever. Um, standard issue is that if it looks like there might be boobs in a thumbnail to a DWM episode, it gets loads of views and loads more comments. So I'm probably going to have to make sure there's less boobage in the future, just so that I've got an opportunity to read through all of your comments and see what's going on. But it's nice to get a big crowd. Everybody is welcome. Go to Nichelle says, when I draw a sexy anime character, my friend, who's a girl, wanted the drawing, so I gave it to her, and the next day she gave him, oh, Bella, <laughs> immediate text messaging in the background, sorry guys. So anyway, what you're saying is she immediately gave him back to her mother, um, oh, she immediately gave them back because her mother said that it was sexist or some shit, and she should be ashamed for having that. I guess not everybody respects my style and yours. <laughs> Yeah, so like, really busty anime is not for everyone. It's like you gotta watch that shit. But uh, that's what I was saying, man. Like, um, if it's too over-sexualized, it's gonna put people off. Like, anime can be an excellent art form if you focus it on as such. But if you're just handing out pictures of booby characters to girls, you're probably gonna get in trouble eventually, so watch that shit. Trashy Scrub says, Well, sometimes I draw my style is really Cannibal Corpse album coverish. So one day there's this one girl who saw that and called me a psycho. So yeah, yeah. And Spawn of a Void says, Hey Mikey, hello Spawn. So drawing is fun, right? Well, can you please help me to draw more realistically? And then in brackets, what's your favourite childhood game? Thanks, Mikey. No worries, Spawn. Um, can I teach you how to draw more realistically? Observation. Uh, if you want to start drawing realistically and stuff like that, dude, Stop on this channel. Stop getting into anime and manga and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not saying stop forever. Stop for now and like give yourself a month of studying anatomy and looking at real life things and learning really crisp studies and becoming really crisp and observant. Really get lights and shadows in and stuff like that. Because anime manga styles, I really like it. It's a fun way to build up characters, produce stories and create really fun imagery. Um, but that's not going to help you in your realism whatsoever. So yeah, try coming out the style and embracing something new. That's my favourite childhood game. Um, I guess in when you're like, if we're talking about real life games, then when I was in primary school, I don't know if this is a thing that translates to America. I don't even know if it translates to any other part of England. So we'll see. But basically, in school, like if you all wanted to play it. Then what you did is you got a mate and you put your arms around his, like around his shoulders, and you used to walk around the playground and you go, who wants to play it? And if somebody else wanted to play, then they would come up and they would put their arms around your shoulders as well. So you had this long line that grew of people marching around the playground going, who wants to play? Um, you know, what was the other one? Stuck in the mud. But it always had this weird rhythm. And basically, that almost became more fun than playing it and stuff like that and catch in the uh, playground. So yeah, that was my one of my favourite walking around games, just a gang getting together, chanting. Good times. And that's why I'm in a lot of cults um, during my early teen years. Other than that, in terms of video games, I, it's no competition, it's Final Fantasy VII. I'm from that generation that still believes Final Fantasy VII was one of the greatest um, video games. 1997 was an excellent year though, because Radiohead also released the OK Computer album, so good times all round. Spawn of a Void, what was your favourite game? Wired to Pooch says, you the man, dude. Thank you very much. You taught me so much of drawing and I can almost show my true potential. You're so close. I really want to start a graphic novel, which is why I'm waiting on tutorials on how to draw men. Oh, that's my drink, a cup of tea warning. Mmm. Delicioso. I'm not even going to bother explaining that. Um, by the way, your anime art is fucking awesome. Oh, cheers, dude. The question, if you're interested, is immortality. Can you live forever and won't have to fear fuck all? Oh, right. For a minute, I, s I thought you said, um, what about immortality? You could live forever and you wouldn't have to wear fuck all. And I was just thinking, yeah, because there's nothing like giving up all the hassle of wearing clothes when you're immortal. Um, not having to fear fuck all? No, nah, you'd still have fears. So this is like a really random thing. It was a conversation I had with somebody at work a while back, but then they got fired. So like basically, um, 
there is this really you guys probably know if you've watched kill bill part two there's this really famous speech where bill talks about superman i'm going off on a magic mad massive tangent already and he says that superman is unique among all the superheroes because he was born superman he was born a kryptonian kal-el with all of his power whereas all the other characters you know peter parker gets bitten by a spider he turns into spider-man batman um gets rich he turns into batman you know it's a bit more dramatic than that but basically the people are the original and the superhero is what they become whereas with superman he's always superman and he becomes or pretends to be a normal human being clark kent and so um bill in kill bill uh, basically just goes on about the fact that clark kent is a critique on people and that superman sees people as sniveling and stupid and weak and he tries to um, you know, camouflage himself in human society by becoming the same type of character. Which is fine, but if you really think about it and kind of dive in on this sort of stuff, it doesn't quite work for me. And the point is that Superman is all about the fact that he's got superpowers and short of something, somebody getting like, you know, a kryptonite tip to this, that or the other, um, he is essentially not immortal. He can live for a really, really long time but invulnerable and technically shouldn't have to fear anything. But instead, what that means is that Superman's problems aren't the physical, aren't the life-threatening dangers that he has, but his real-life problems are the same problems we as day-to-day -day human beings have, minus the getting hit by cars and dying sort of thing, in that all of his issues become his inability to relate to Lois Lane or an impressor. Like, his day-to-day -day interaction with people, he really struggles. So... I think Superman really exemplifies his struggles with day-to-day -day human relationships. It's not him saying he thinks humans are weak and idiots. It's him having the only thing that he can't master happens to be the only thing he wasn't born immune to. He's always been super powerful, but when he's actually got to work for himself and relate to people or stop being a puppet of the government, he really, really struggles. So I'm saying, basically, um, coming all the way back around to your question, Wyatt, is that being immortal and living forever doesn't necessarily mean you'd fear fuck all. I think if you're immortal and you live forever, you're still going to like maybe have day to day insecurities. Sure, you might not care on a like real long term level because whoever like, you know, is not impressed with you will eventually die and you can just try again. Sure. But, you know, little things, building up relationships, stuff like that. I think if anything, it would become worse. It'd be like almost a neurosis. Uh, because it's the only problem you've got left in your life and it'll just become bigger and bigger like that story about the cat that was in the cupboard or something like that having a lot of flashbacks to childhood stuff so yeah those are my thoughts basically what about you <laughs> as well oh man i can tell already you've got some really interesting questions and <laughs> this is i'm not going to be able to read through all your comments it was never really the case so it's always a struggle by the way as well somebody i'm sure i glanced at a comment when i was opening up the whole list um wanted to know what order i read this in because some people comment really early and stuff Sometimes I put it in date order and then go in reverse because if you date order your comments, it forces YouTube to show you all the comments on a video as long as it's within a year. And then I read the newest and go back. And um, now, just to mix it up, I'm just doing what's how does this order it? What does it call it? Top comments, it says. I'm just reading from the top down, but I mix it up any time. So, you know, it's just a little bit luck of the draw. But if you guys have got something excellent to say and I don't read it, then um, copy paste it, stick it into the next episode, and hopefully I'll catch it next time around. So I love like, knowing what you guys are up to. And the standard old question is, what projects are you working on at the moment? Are you guys working on any like artwork stuff or putting together your own comics and things? I do like hearing about that. In fact, at the moment, um, just in the back of my mind the other day, I was really thinking about those old Pokemon Mikemon videos, and I was like, yeah, it's hit and miss. So then I was just thinking... What if I did, like, instead of, um, like, a Gajinka version, like a Mecha version? So my really rough rule of thumb for filling in the sketchbook page today was just simply, um, could I do, like, a Mecha version of Charizard? And then I started thinking, what about those old retro 70s and 80s Mecha anime? Could I get it into that style or not? So that's kind of what I'm playing with in the sketchbook today. That's the kind of thing I've got going on. What have you got going on at home? Oh, and further warning, in fact, um, I'm having a bit more practice play with that Cintiq that I've got. So there probably won't quite be a tutorial this weekend or an SAS or anything like that. Probably just going to put up another like black and white study video or something that I've been working on in relation to The Walking Dead because that's freaking awesome. Okay, Electric says, hey Mikey, hello Electric. I know you get this question a lot and I don't mean to be a hater, but why don't you draw men? Oh, that's another drink a cup of tea warning. Mmm. 
Indeed, because like you said with the eyes, this is not quote for quote, but you're going to draw the eyes from all perspectives. Then why do you not draw humans from all perspectives and also draw men? Um, and P.S. I'm like your 27th liker on this vid. Well, thank you very much for the like, Electric. And no, I don't consider you a hater. Feedback is absolutely fine. Let me know what you guys think. That's cool. Um, and let's see. <laughs> Basically, the short answer is I'm getting around to it. There's a lot of topics I'm covering of tutorials. And I've got like a process that I'm ticking off, basically, instead of just doing things. In fact, ah, oh, here we go. In the comments, the master of the fret says, uh, he says he plans to, at least in the tutorials, but everyone knows him for the sexy anime girls. So in due time, I guess, you are indeed correct. So there's more comments on there, but it's just you guys having a chat. So good on you all. Jinji says, can you please do guys for the SAS? I think that'll be really cool. Hashtag hardcore crew. That's not a drink of tea warning, because that is a slightly different kind of request. So yeah, eventually we could do them. Sweet hot guys, <laughs> we'll get around to it. Blood Weather says, I like your channel because of this. And then he's got the pervy face, understood. And Timothy Messer says, that anime you mentioned of the girls fighting in a pool with their asses is Keijo. I guess more exclamation points for better. Cheers, Timothy. So yeah, I mentioned the other day that I was, I was vaguely aware that there's a new anime out and it involves just boobs and bums bouncing about. And it's that is a real thing. That is literally apparently the entire point of a whole anime. Uh, so swings and roundabouts. And it might sound hypocritical because that's like a really good focus of a lot of my SAS drawings and stuff like that. But I want more from anime. I don't just want that. Like, if I had to pick between that sort of shit and then only watching, like, Miyazaki films, hands down, no competition. I like the quality stuff. Crescent Sound says, Trust me, my friend, the action will come. Also, if you could control magic, you'd use lightning, as you'd be able to have so much fun of it and run incredibly fast like paralyzed enemies, and more lightning is hard to beat. Ah, Crescent Sound. So lightning techniques are cool when it comes to anime characters. Um, when you talk about going really fast, I'm assuming I'm thinking of the Godspeed or Godspell technique that Killua has in Hunter x Hunter and other such things. But never forget One Piece, one of the most famous ones. Luffy fights one of the most powerful characters with one of the most powerful devil fruits in the, like... Um, I was going to say in the universe, in the Luffy world, so to speak, but Pirate Age. And he fights him and defeats him really fucking early on in the manga, really easily, because he's made of rubber. And the lightning obviously had no effect on it because it doesn't conduct electricity. To be fair, I think it kind of hinted that they could use some form of hacky as well right back then. But yeah, I think it's in the Skypea arc, really, really early in the manga. Well, comparatively early, let's say, in the manga. So yeah, there's always kind of a weakness. There's always going to be somebody stronger. You've got to watch that shit. But other than that, yeah, lightning would be fucking cool. Rangon's Cuban says, I love drawing along to your voice for some reason. The question, if you were to be in a situation of a character, oh, if I was to be in a situation of a character in an anime, which and why? So, hmm. Oh, if I had to get involved in existing anime manga comments. I mean, things that I'd really enjoy to see would be stuff like One Punch Man, but I wouldn't like the fact that my hometown gets destroyed and obliterated every week and everybody's constantly in mortal danger. Um, and I don't know, a lot of the really good manga and anime I watch like tends to have a violent element, element like people get murdered and stuff, and I don't want to actually physically be around of that happening. Hmm, let's have a think. Maybe I'll be L from Death Note. And then when he picks up the death note, he just hands it in somewhere. It just says, oh, someone's lost a notebook. And then he just lives a normal life instead of going power crazy and then uh, eventually dying off. Something like that, I'd say. Maybe. What about you guys? If you could actually take on the role of existing anime characters, not just because you think they're cool, but actually be yourself in their situation and have to deal with whatever struggles they've got to deal with, what would it be? Because I know stuff like Sword Art Online. Oh, God, that acclaimed anime i know that um people kind of go oh that's really cool kirito is really super powered up but if you were there and you tried it you'd be stuck in a video game you'd be fucked no one actually wants to have that happen that would, that would suck balls Celevi, <laughs> i don't want to get angry about it junior anthony says it's called keijo that's that's a lot of you guys have commented that that anime was keijo Unsurprisingly, a lot of you guys listening to DWM happen to be very aware of this anime. Ah, oh, good on you all. Dark Jet Production says, This is awesome, but your drawings don't need to be drawn towards sexual attraction, man. Yeah, well, you're right. They don't, and they can be. It's one or the other. They can do whatever you want, or we can do what you want. And I really don't mind if you don't like it. That's completely cool. But this whole series is literally, the visual bit is I just happen to be filling up the sketchbook. 
So sometimes the pictures will be to your taste, sometimes they won't, sometimes they'll look good, sometimes it'll be a page full of shit because I'm not really feeling for drawing. That's just the way of it. And then loads of you guys have gotten in the comments. I'm having a really quick look through. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Some of you are pro boobs, some of you are anti boobs, some of you are pro drawing what you want, and some of you are a bit more fascist. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, wow, this is actually quite a long string of comments. And you know what? It's not turned into an argument. I'm. I'm very impressed. Wow. Well done for you guys for not for not turning it into an actual like all on thing. But yeah, the overall thing is that um I like mixing up the art styles. I like drawing whatever. The current focus of the tutorials and all that sort of stuff is female anime. Bear in mind, like I'm learning as well as we go along. I'm just another guy on the journey, like slowly getting a little bit better at art, hopefully, as time goes along. And that's just currently the focus. Eventually I'm gonna focus on guys. And there'll probably be people who just like, stop drawing power characters, stop drawing guys. And eventually, who knows, we'll just focus on backgrounds and people are like, you're, you're not enough portrait orientated or something. Um, but yeah, it definitely has a strong focus. And of course, that gets people's attention because you don't get that many people on YouTube doing tutorials at the moment. But focus on the stuff you guys want to see. I know this. No lies here. Trainer Orange says, it's funny because I always listen in art class and my art teacher decided to put on a DWM for the whole class. Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> How did that go, Trader Orange? Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> I wouldn't, would not recommend that at all. Antoine Deander says, Keijo, the anime of all the girls. You guys know this. I'm going to say a great big thank you, but skip all your Keijo comments if there's a lot of you people kindly letting me know all about it. And Jordan Williams says, I think Tsunade and Revy are the only true adults you've drawn for the SAS. I'm not sure about the girls from One Piece. So yeah, the other day I was probably mentioning, because this comes up a lot, is that if an anime character looks too young, I might draw some fan art because I like drawing, but I'm not going to draw like a sexy version because you, you can't depict sexualized children. It's, it, I think in some countries it's proper illegal. And even if it's not, it's probably going to give you a bit of a bad rap. And then someone's kindly mentioned that most popular anime, the characters are actually, even if they look old and really like chesty or developed, so to speak, they actually can be quite young characters. Um, so yeah, there's probably a risky thing there. But let's just say all of my depictions are them when they're older. It's all on their 18th birthday or, you know, when it's technically legal and totally fine and not going to put me in prison. Um, because, and I've talked about this, this topic's coming up a lot recently, but I talked about this ages ago when I was talking about not liking hentai. Um, because it over sexualizes children that's absolutely true and like you'll get characters that are um super busty or just younger than they should be and all that sort of stuff um a lot of standard anime doesn't but that scale in fact i've talked about it in the boobs tutorials oddly enough there we go how it they kind of just they oversize for boobs and you'll see that a lot in my artwork but i'm just following the trend so somehow i'm innocent of all of this stuff but yeah something to keep an eye out for so let's say from now on and in fact You'll notice I don't, other than mentioning SAS, there's nothing about any of my new artwork that even involves the word sexy. It's just fan art now. So it might even go from a sexy anime Saturday and go into a fan art Friday or something like that. Maybe that's something we'll have to do for a nice, clean, fresh 2016, <laughs> 2017, I should say, because 2016 is a big pile of shit. What a write off. Although I'm having a lot of fun of this. Absolutely. But what a shit year overall. Seth Tone says, Hey Mikey, love everything you do. Why, thank you, Seth. Surely not everything. Was wondering if you ever read Backy the Grappler. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, man, absolutely. Shit, I've forgotten about that. I'm a big fan of that manga. It touches on real life martial arts, but blows them up for pretty cool fights. You're fucking right it does, mate. As for magical power, I like, don't know if it counts, but I'd want Rafe's ultimate eye from the full metal alchemist. I don't know that technique. I've only read a little bit into FMA. So no spoilers, please, because actually it looks really, really good. I got um, down with the idea of Koan Kukan, something like that, equivalent exchange, um, and a little bit about the sins, but not all the way. And if you had the ultimate eye, you could draw things better or draw things worse and pinpoint the accuracy. Lols. Good, good. Yeah, backy to grappler backy. So that's gone through like three different entire arcs and volumes i think started off in the hmm, i want to say 70s maybe 80s anyway um back to grab grappy <laughs> grappy the backler yeah that's exactly what it's called backy the grappler is like um this guy mixed martial arts mixed martial artist training and fighting if you like martial arts in real life you've got to check out that manga it's so good the first entire arc is good 
the second arc where like all the prisoners escape and the best fighters across the world are like you know cosmically drawn that is so good and the art style and like the the kind of toning the muscle ripples is really really good borderline homoerotic on backy sometimes but otherwise incredibly incredibly good and yeah you just gotta you just gotta work your way through it um a lot of it is absolute bullshit when it talks about the science behind some of their fighting techniques and shit like that i've grown up learning a lot about martial arts like maybe learning more than i could do so to speak um but a lot of it is absolute bs as long as you bear that in mind like don't read something that happens in that and think it's fact because it is set in the real world otherwise um other than that it's a great manga ah yes Seth tone i can't believe i've not been thinking about backy the grappler over the years that is such a powerful stuff i'm gonna have to reread some of that i think psychomantis says this is so amazing thank you for sharing and have you seen ko century beast oh no worries psychomantis and no and copy and open a new tab and paste ko century beast Oh, it looks like an old school anime. Oh, from the early 90s. No, I don't know about it, but maybe I will have a look. I'll leave that tab open. Um, Shinji Akari likes that I did no erasing in the last episode. Thank you very much. And Makuo D says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Makuo. Have you seen Porter Robinson's Shelter? It's a recent anime relating things that are... Oh, wait, what? So are you saying it's only six minutes long, basically? I'm going to also make a note of that. I'm not going to dive in and have a look. Because I don't really have the... Oh, Porter Robinson, the band? Oh, oh, it's the music video to this. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Oh, no, I haven't. I will have a look. Let's pop that on later. I'm going to try not to open too many tabs and go on too many tangents because otherwise we won't get through all the comments in time. Uh, Wait, what the... I'm going to try to say your name correctly. Sorry if I ruined it. Trigrave Black Tiger? Something like that? Or too good for <laughs> Anyway, Trigave Black Tiger says, To answer your question, I would have some kind of n either natural magic that I can use to make things grow from the ground like trees and tap into them and see what they have and stuff and kind of be like a Celtic druid and mix it a bit with healing. Like if you got wounded, I could use some other magic over the wound and bark would grow over it, healing the wound before falling and leaving just a few tiny scars. And if this comes on a DWM next week, hi everybody! <laughs> Hello, back to you. So. Yeah, that last week's question was obviously because I completely forgotten because I do no research when doing this. I don't pre-read your question or anything. It's a like it's a just monologue, random blurb through the comment section for just short of an hour. But yeah, I did ask last time round uh, if you could have any magical powers. What would it be? Or at least one of you guys did, and I liked it and stole it. Um, so a kind of healing druid tea tree powers. I was going to say tea tree oven, and you could be like. Uh, like people with a wooden techniques from uh, like Mokunojutsu, something like that from Naruto, a little bit like that. Um, and the healing block bark stuff, that reminds me of Adventure Time. Don't know if you guys watch that, and if you're not, you're idiots because it's every episode so short, but most of them are a fun, quick watch. And there's a bit in that where like um, he's kind of got this relationship with this sword that he can't get rid of, and he learns to accept it, and it just wraps around his arm. And then later on, it gets a really bit fucked up because um, the character Finn loses his arm and then stuff is growing out all over this stuff. I'm going to have to do a Finn and Jake. Um, draw simple easy, I think. I don't know why I haven't bothered branching into popular cartoons. That's for that later. But yeah, there's this whole thing about growth, decay and destruction. Like trees carry their scars over years and it affects how they grow and develop and it all reflects humans and the scars that you have in your life and it affects how you grow as a person, your personality. So yeah, there's loads behind that. Nice idea. Elite ghost skills, walk through the gameplays and more. <laughs> Long name, mate. The type of magic I would use would be creation magic, as I could make pills and things that would give me new abilities for a while, and then they'd wear off, and I wouldn't have to work. I could make any meal I want, and I could make myself a phone better than any technology in this world. <laughs> I think you're thinking a bit small, mate. <laughs> if, you, if you had the magical power of creation magic... You would use that magic to make a better phone. <laughs> like, you need a better imagination, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. Um, but yeah, it's a great power. Obviously, you'd create curses for disease. Oh, cures. Oh, even better. You'd create cures for diseases and stuff. Okay, that's a much better thing. But you wouldn't use your magic for fighting as you're too lazy to fight. Great. Okay, so curing diseases with your creationist power is actually quite cool. So good on you. But <laughs> your intro to that is like the most small-minded thing I've had in a while. Oh man, if I had a power to do anything, I'd have a better phone. 
Yay! Joel says, for crossing over anime, I wouldn't mind seeing... Oh, crossover anime. Oh, yeah, so this is another question I asked. Like, obviously, Joel's part of the uh, crew that's listening in this far in. Hashtag hardcore crew, you know this. Um, but I did ask, like, if you could cross two completely different anime or manga, um, not for the sake of them fighting each other, because that's been done to death, but if you could cross them over to see if one anime had characters that could solve the problem of people in another anime, or vice versa, or just to see how it worked out, how would that be? And you've said you'd like to see the techno mages of Nanoa help out Guts and his party. I think Guts and Nanoa have a cool partnership and training sessions, and I'd like to see Shrek, Shriek, Shiorke, Shiorke, I'm going to say. I'd like to see Shiorke try to make sense of their sci-fi magic system. Also, <laughs> Gazerk butts. Nice. Lols, that's got to become a meme. Butts for Gazerk. Level Slayer X says, My magical power would be to shoot laser beams out of my eyes like Overlord Zeta from Makai Kingdom. I just want to yell my first name with BEAM! Yeah, that'd be quite good. Like, if you're really, like, just in an argument with somebody at work, and they're giving you a load of lip, and then instead of trying to come out with, like, a clever response, you could just be like, Mikey Beam! And just big angry lasers came out of your eyes. Now, I've not seen um, Overlord Zeta from Makai Kingdom. I don't know that anime. But I'm thinking of the second season of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, where I think the moment you kill the Pillarmen or any of the um, vampires, their final death move, if you cut their head off, is that they can fire beams out of their eyes, like dying power laser beams to kill whoever kills them. Might not be something like that. Kid Fresh TL34 says, This DWM came out at a perfect time. I was just about to sit down and get some art in when I got the hashtag notification squad. <laughs> but when you're watching Re.0, the main focus of the show is character development, and the action scenes are really just a side part of the story. Really good show, though. Yeah. So last week I mentioned that I just started watching it, and I was a few episodes in. I'm a few more episodes in now, and I've just got to the bit where they've had the very beginning of the selection ceremony and it talks about the four princesses that are going to you know try to rule the kingdom and all that sort of stuff and you're right like uh that started off being i thought it was going to be a super clever anime where every single episode was set on day one and it's all about how he lives day one in different ways and then he kind of gets past day one and it becomes a bit more about why is he dying again when he moves into the castle and what happens there i'm trying not to give you any spoilers and i thought that was good and then after that, it became all about Rem and Ram. Like, he moves in because he fancied that, like, uh, that princess girl or whatever who was super nice um, with the cat Esper or something. And then it's almost like she just has nothing to do with the show now. And it's all about Rem and Ram and their past and, like, what clan they came from and all that sort of stuff. So I can see why... Because in the beginning, I was like, I don't even see these two made characters. How many episodes have I got to watch? Because people keep saying, do a Rem and Ram um, sort of fan art sort of thing. And then now I can see that they seem to be at least the main focus of the show. But I haven't got that much further in because it, the story keeps going off on a bit of a tangent sometimes. And I forget what's happening. But yes, the character development is definitely the main focus of that. Good shout. Luke says, not commented in a while. Well, welcome back, Luke. But I'd have that learning anything super quickly power you're on about. Sounds awesome. Hashtag hardcore crew. Yeah, so my answer to the what special power would you have if it could be anything. Mine would have been super super quick learning ability like if you wanted to read a book in another language you could read like the dictionary of that language or you could read how to learn that language and you wouldn't have to study because the moment you've read it you've learned it and kind of mastered it you'd only have to see someone play a song on a piano once and you could smash it out so kind of like photographic memory but without all the weird you know being on the autistic spectrum stuff that comes along with it super learning power Ms. Dia art says hi mikey hello there seeing as i'm 18 and still at college i can get away with doing as much art as possible jealous so i try to fit in eight to ten eight to ten hours a day you motherfucker excuse my language like how a pro would work but i'm scared that i'm going to have to find a job when i finish colleague colleague <laughs> When I finish college, my bad. I think the next two to three years I'll be a pro level in terms of art. Good for you. So I was wondering if you had any advice. Um, yeah, grow a thick skin. That's definitely it. Like I do art as a hobby. I have like a day job in an office because my level of art skill won't feed me, if that makes sense. I can't quite live off it yet. That's why I'm trying to turn it into a YouTube thing because it's a bit of a different method. Um, but yeah, I'd say you're probably going to go through some shit years of... Um, working for really cheap, um, which is a great opportunity. That's how they like to call it, working for other um, in-house art houses. 
um, or get into video game design or anything like that, um, try not to. I'm not telling you not to like live your dreams, mate. Fucking go for it, but um, try not to like dive straight into some artist position in an art industry because it's massive out there and it's just it's really tough. To be fair, I've never tried, so don't let me stop you as I'm saying this. But I'm saying have a dose of realism in what you do. Have really thick skin because people are always going to tell you you can't do stuff especially when it comes to things like artwork that's really subjective. So just learn to kind of not be too worried about other people's opinions and uh, try your best, I guess. Good luck. Good luck to you. Xavier Frosty says, Hi, Mikey. Hello, Xavier. How long did you take to get a grip in digital drawing? Oh, I don't even have it down yet. So I'm going to do, like I said, another go on the um, Cintiq tablet for a black and white study at the weekend, or at least upload it at the weekend. I'm already pretty much um, nailed it. But in terms of digital art, like, I love drawing with pencil and paper, and I love putting a pen on a piece of paper as well. I like the texture. And I'm using a tablet, like, for that last Rhea Scremory, SAS, like, I didn't quite get to finish it to the standard I usually like. I was very, very short of time. That's because I can't get any good clean lines with it. Getting line art on a tablet is a freaking nightmare. I'm really not found it yet. So I'm really trying to do it a lot so it gets easier for me and I get better at it. But that is a tough struggle. So normally, if I want to draw a character for an SAS, I bung it on a piece of paper, sketch it out, ink it, scan it in, and take quite a while colouring. Now, I take like hours and hours and hours just to block it out and then get the line art and then get the final line art layer. That takes so much longer, it's actually eating into my day and it's much worse. And I've got less time then to actually get the colouring done. So... I've, I don't have a grip in digital drawing, mate. Like, in terms of digital painting and working with colour, um, really, really useful tools out there. But in terms of um, actually getting the line art down, I much prefer the paper still, definitely. And you would like to have cryokinesis, ice powers. Oh, I love that name. If you had your magical power thing, cryokinesis. That's a great term, Xavier. Casey Ellis says, hey, Mikey. Hey, Casey. Nice new pen. Yeah, I used a red pen last time. I used a blue pen once because I ran out of black pens and someone said I should use more colours, so I thought I'd try red. It seemed appropriate for Rias. That pen, actually, is an orthographic line pen, so it's really, really difficult to use it on a rough papered sketch pad. So as we can see, we're back to my uh, standard black inkers. Anyway, for the question, you'd honestly do the whole weapon blood thing from Soul Eater or the whole branch of Sin thing from Dead Man Wonderland because bloody hell, that's fucking amazing. You like those blood techniques. I just asked you. <laughs> Wait, I just heard you ask me the same question that I did. <laughs> In the middle of school, taking art class was like mandatory, and it was like the basic art classes where you explore simple stuff, sketching, painting, ceramics, and that stuff. So you didn't really like painting that much, and ceramics was iffy. Uh, sketching and working with coloured pencils and markers made you super happy anyway. Long story short, middle school art teacher, Mr. Vercelli, Vercelli. Basically taught you the basics of sketching when you hit 12 and then anime found you and you never went back. Yeah, so I had trouble reading your comment out because I had loads of shouting in it. Um, but basically, I think the overall theme was when I was just talking about when you had to draw your shoes in art class and stuff like that back in the day. But yeah, we always had kind of uh, art teachers that really did it in. I had an art teacher called Mr. Andrews and um, he was a mixed bag in terms of being an art teacher. He was really fucking good. And I was a really bad student. I was really, really naughty at school. And I started not going to my art lessons. And sometimes I'd like take tables in school and I'd take them to tech classes and I'd saw them up into bits and then I'd build them into different things. I was very naughty. I didn't go to my lessons. And this guy, God, God bless his man. Like we didn't get on amazingly well, but he forced me to take two years of art for A level, like the AS and the A level in one year, basically. He made me sign a contract and forced me to do it and I'm bloody glad he did because I was a real shit but um yeah smashed it off the back of that so what a gentleman good to you Mr Andrews hope you're still out there haven't seen him since um but yeah everyone's got these kind of art teachers that like made a moment in their lives really weirdly my next art teacher after him was um someone else called Mr Whitehead because obviously my actual name's Mikey Whitehead it's not Mikey Mega Mega in fact it's Michael Whitehead obviously how weird um but yeah and he was into the exact same kind of art I was so that was really creepy for Shashton's S? Is that how you say your name? Hey, Mikey. Hey, For Ashton. I uh, love your drawings as always. Thank you very much. Um, you struggle with drawing females, and your videos have helped me out a lot. I have a Deviant Art if you want to check it out. ForAshton.DeviantArt.com. There is a link. I'm not going to look at it right now, but I will look at it later. Otherwise, it's going to take up too much time. And you always drink tea or coffee when you draw. Ooh. 
Well, I like what you've said about the tea and coffee. I will check out your link right now. Let's take a look. Ah, oh, awesome. You've got these really roughed up warrior characters in your sketchbook. Worked on some bleach bank eyes. <laughs> I see you've blacked out a lot of the faces. A lot of the faces on these characters. You need to get more confident with that. But that is a great start. Keep putting pen and ink to paper, sir. Viking Sire says, I like to draw myself. <laughs> I've I just I just stopped myself from reading out the rest of your sentence. I'm I'm going to read it anyway. It just as I saw it with my eyes before I read it, like it just set me off. I like to draw myself having sex with my waifu. Have you ever done anything like that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. No. No, Viking. I haven't. I haven't done that. Um, A lot of the drawings I do go in my sketchbook or like they go onto YouTube. And I wouldn't make an image of myself having sex with anything. <laughs> it's just so fucking inappropriate. <laughs> oh, man. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. I hope your parents... Um, bring that out to show your real wife in the future, like when you take her home to meet them. And here's what our darling did when he was younger. Oh my god. What a thing. Don't... <laughs> Do what you want. I'm not here to judge. Draw whatever you like, but maybe have a real good think before you get into that sort of stuff. Good for you. Xvive says, how do you come up with so many diverse hairstyles for guys and girls? And if I were to have any powers, mine would be able to revive my Copic markers with the snap of my fingers. Um, yeah, so this is a thing. I hear that, because I've never used them. I really want to. I'm saving up for pennies and all that sort of stuff. Copic markers are apparently V colouring markers if you're still working um, traditional mediums. And apparently they're fucking expensive. So if they run out of ink, you've got to dole out a lot of money to fill them up again. Um, so yeah, infinite marker technique would be nice. I'm sure skin tones and blacks and whites probably run out the quickest out of all the colours. Um, how do I come up with so many diverse hairstyles for guys and girls? Reference images, x -Fieve. Lots and lots of reference images. If you see a character who's got something crazy going on, or you see an artist who does hair in a really particular way, loads of ringlets or curls where it catches the light, copy that image, paste it into a folder on your computer, and title that folder Awesome Hair. And then when you start to design your own characters, don't copy it straight out because it won't help you, but use it as reference to help build up like more life into characters' hair. I'm always having a look at other people's artwork all the time, all the time. Finale Wolf says, Final Wolf, maybe. No, Finale. Mike, do you not work with colour pencils and such? Oh, there we go. Um, we've just talked about this. Yeah, not so much, mate. I wish I did. Um, sometimes watercolour, but not as much as I should. Getting um, black ink out is really, really easy. I do colours when I colour in digitally, because it's easier. But I don't have much by way of colour pens and pencils at home. I should buy some and have a play, but I haven't as of yet, so you've nailed it. Streak White says, A tutorial on making Lucy from Fairy Tale, please. Love your work. Character particular tutorials. Oh, maybe the draw simple easy? Yeah, we'll get some fairy tale characters in. Thanks for the suggestion. Jar Gamer Yami says, What type of tools do you use to draw? Takes a sip of own tea. Oh, you mother. Yeah. Hmm. It's having a sip. I use a pen. I'm not going to tell you what that pen is. So there's, there's a thing about. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to explain that. But basically, there's some particular questions that involve tea. Quaker Uwosu, nice name bro, says, Hey Mikey, I just wanted to know what software or device you use with your digital anime. That's a safe question. Once I scan it in on the scanner, which is just a cheap scanner I got online from ebuyer.com, I then uh, colour it in Photoshop. That's the only program I use. I hear there's, over there, there's a program really, really similar for colouring your artwork that's free called Paint Tool Sai, S-A-I. Um, I've not tried it myself, but I've seen loads of people do amazing artwork on time-lapse YouTube videos with that. And you don't have to pay for it, so maybe give that a go. But um, I use Photoshop simply because I started with Photoshop and I've gotten a bit more used to it. Um, so I just haven't had the time to learn something else. I'm not saying it's the best because there's probably loads. I hear Coral Painter 
is like real sick ass software for getting your coloring done so maybe give that a try if you're ever interested Kalia McFadden says the wrestling anime girl thing is Keijo oh yeah of course it was freaking funny even for a girl oh she liked it still not seen it past like the first half episode myself um Kirill Stoyanov wants me to draw Claire Claire from what can you draw Claire you say you're the best thanks but can you draw Claire Get back in the comments, Grill. Claire from what anime? Because there's a lot of characters called that. Angel Harris says, Can you make a draw of Mikey for girls in the JoJo style? Yeah, love some bizarre adventure. I'll try my best to remember that sort of thing. Alicia Black 06 says, That drawing show thing was so true because we spent half a term or drawing shoe thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this must be like a real regular thing across loads of people who did art at school. Um, substitute teachers coming in, not knowing anything about art, and either making you copy out of an art textbook or making you take off a shoe and put it on a table and give it a draw. And then you hand it in and you never see it again. What a waste. Yoshio Aki says, My purr would be to have a crimson flame thing. Something I'd love to use. Crimson flame, sir. So, red flames. That's a lot of them are. Good for you. And if that's a particular technique from a particular anime I don't know, then someone let me know. Keiko says, They were so happy that I responded to their questions. Yeah, don't worry about it. It happens. That's the whole point of this series. I hope one day I'll improve so much that I'll be able to ask you for a collab. By the way, each Wednesday I'm drawing whilst watching DWMs. Oh, I'm so sorry today's a day late. It's a Thursday. Um, because YouTube messed up my last Resident Evil video, so I had to take that down and re-upload that. And then now we're just sliding back into the week. But I'm glad you enjoy watching these along. And that is, probably not said this for a few episodes, that is kind of like the point. And that's why I don't have music on in this, on the background of this, because maybe you guys like getting your own artwork or whatever done with your own music on. Um, but this is like a nice kind of, you know, I just kind of chat and doing my own art. Obviously, I'm just filling in my own sketchbook here. Obviously, I'm not doing it right now. I'm recording it separately. And you get to uh, crack on with your art as well. Isn't that nice? Because getting artwork done is good. I like it. I like it a lot. So excellent. Build up the skills, Keiko. We'll have a collab in the future. Maybe. Who knows? And you need to buy more sketchbooks. Yeah, me too. Zapizor says, like you said, time space magic, either that or golem creation magic. Ooh, breathing life into inanimate existing things. I like that, Zapizor. And Kingy says, for me, Rias is the most shitty waifu that could exist. She's a beautiful character, but her oversized boobs just destroy the character. Ah, yes. But does that mean that you might be a bad person for assuming that her personality is null and void just because of her physical ex physical expression and appearance? <gasps> oh my goodness, she mustn't judge people on their looks. But yes. Girls with um, great big boobs, you do sometimes think maybe they've gotten away with just being busty to the point they don't need to have personalities. And maybe you don't give them the chance that you should. Because I've known some beautiful girls. I've been lucky enough to meet some beautiful people in my life. There's loads of them. Like, the world's full of beautiful people. Everybody has their own kind of beauty. But, like, traditionally, really beautiful girls who, at first, I literally thought, wow, they are really, really hot. They're probably not worth knowing. And it turned out they, some of them, not all of them, to be fair, <laughs> but some of them were actually really incredibly interesting people with a lot to say and actually some valid opinions about stuff. And I thought to myself, you mustn't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, so there you go. GearTech112 says, do Yui from SAO, please? Sword Art Online Bird, maybe. And Schizoid137 says, happy birthday, Mikey. Oh, thank you very much, Schizoid. Yes, so my birthday's November the 16th. It is... Um, no longer fun when you're my age. I'm no longer 31. I'm 32 whilst you're actually watching this video. So, yeah, I have to live with that fact. Thanks for reminding me. Like, when you're younger, birthdays are great. As you get older, it's just like, wait, wait, stop it. Stop doing that every year. Stop it again. But um, somebody uh, told me once, it's better than being dead. So if you're unhappy with um, growing older by another year, just remind yourself it's that or being dead. So probably just stick with growing older. For Magical Power, you'd like to have knowledge because it's real. Oh. I know what you're getting at, mate, and I do deep down agree with you, but you did just remind me of a fourth Indiana Jones film. Oh my god, their treasure was knowledge. Oh my god. Mm, god, what a fucking awful film. Um, but yeah, what couldn't you do with knowledge? You're absolutely right. It's painfully obvious when you don't have it. Yes. Thanks for all the awesome drawing tutorials. Cheers. Cheers to you, Schizoid. I do like your answer. I just don't like the fourth Indiana Jones films. Narian TX says, greetings, Mikey. Greetings again, Narian. After the disappointing US election, this video was a welcome distraction. <laughs> oh, mate, you think that's bad? We've done Brexit. Like, you know, the whole world's just making decisions. But let's not turn this into a political thing, because that's a great way to get angry in the comments. You would like to have telepathic hypnosis. Uh, 
that sounds a bit rapey. With this power, I'd expose people's true meaning, beginning with the words that they speak. Oh, I see. So you'd force people to speak their minds instead of using the general day-to-day -day societal, societal barriers of language and things like that. So that would be quite good. But if everybody was really frank, they might all murder each other as well. So swings and roundabouts. Um, it's much better than what I thought you were going to use it for, at least. So good. And also, um, for Anime Crossing, you'd choose Ghost in the Shell to mix with Naruto Shippuden. Why? I don't know. I just think they're too well to make for interesting situations. And Westworld is kicking ass! Hashtag hardcore crew. Be well, cheers. Be well yourself, dude. Oh, I wish we had time to dive into... Oh, yeah, like I might have said before, there's... I'm going to, like, um have, like, another channel, maybe two, and one of them's going to be a bit more film TV anime, whilst this one's a bit more drawing video games. Um, And then we can talk about shit like Westworld all day long. Oh, my God, that last episode of Westworld. Fucking hell! I can't spoil it for you guys if you've not watched it. But fuck me, that was something. I'm like, I'm hooked now to that. I was, I was upset, amazed, and now I have to watch loads of the um beginning episodes again to make sure it all makes sense. Fucking hell. Anyway, yeah, that is good. Anyway, what else are you saying? Ghost in the Shell and Naruto Shippuden. Ghost in the Shell, that's back on the radar. They've released a load of trailers, but let's not worry about that yet. I haven't quite watched all of them. Um. So Ghost in the Shell, cyber hacking and all that sort of stuff with Naruto Shippuden, I don't think they'd be of much use to each other. Ghost in the Shell's entire world is um, what creates a human life? What is a cyber identity? How do you identify yourself? Because nobody does it physically. People give up their human-like personas to become borderline machines that are simply only useful for doing their jobs. And then their cyber brains separately just kind of get put into body forms again later. Whereas Naruto is more kind of natural and organic and full of natural magics and all that sort of stuff. So I don't know. But the end of Naruto, where it had that kind of, um, is it Suzanoski or something like that? Like one of the original God type characters. She did alter reality in a similar way that Ghost in the Shell talks about altering states of reality digitally. So maybe there is a bit of crossover at a real high level, um, um, like a Baudrillard, um, what was it Sep Sepultura and Sacration? Wait, you know that um, John Paul Baudrillard stuff? It's about... Um, real life and being in a digital mysterious world. You know, metaphysics. Anyway, look it up. Google it. Google whatever I just tried to say, but Google it correctly and you'll have an idea of what I'm going on about. But basically, yeah, metaphysics does come into play at the very high levels of both of those, I guess. Um, <laughs> this person's name is I Love Sugar, BTS and Big Bang. Good, good. So when I glanced at that, I thought it was, I love sugar, big tits and big bang. But so, so let me, it's, it's much more innocent than I thought for a minute. You're such a great artist, but please do a tutorial on drawing men. Oh man, I really need a wee right now. I'm just knocking back all this tea. Mm. Big sips. Nile Alaki Manoglu says, I want to draw like you, but sometimes I think it's impossible. I tried to learn with the videos, but hmm, unimpressed face. Oh, dude. Or girl, I can't tell. Like, um. Practice, practice, practice. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. I couldn't draw the way I draw now um, this time last year. It's just keeping it going. Keep going, keep going, get better and you get better. Don't stress it. Uh, the Gaming Scientist says, Hey Mikey, hello The Gaming Scientist. Repeat from last week, if you won the lottery jackpot, what would be the first three things you buy or spend your money on? Um, Wednesday evenings is now officially your favourite evening of the week. Awesome! Although this is on a Thursday and now I feel guilty. Keep up the amazing work. Hashtag hardcore crew. Ooh, three things I would spend my money on. Um, so I guess I would spend some of it on traveling the whole world or something like that. But you could travel in luxury so that you'd um, go to loads of hostels and meet loads of different people from loads of different um, cultures and different countries. So you had a real experience. And then every weekend you could check into a five star hotel so you could actually just get like a massage and relax and not stress out a bit and be stinky as well like some other travellers. So maybe something like that. And then the rest of the money um, would, I don't know, maybe I've got a friend who runs a charity, maybe help with that or like donate it to like stuff I'm really into. Maybe start up a whole charity that um, gets like, I'd, I don't know, this is a stupid idea, like gets kids off the street if they're like into drugs and gang culture and gets them into creative arts and drawing and stuff. Uh, maybe. And then the rest of the money I would probably buy like a castle and make it zombie proof because there's always a part of me that thinks zombies will happen what about you the gaming scientist what three things would you spend 
those hard-won monies on, my friend. Wolf in Apocalypse says, damn, I want this picture. High School D times D is like my favourite anime. Nice job, man. Thank you very much. It's in reference to what we were drawing last time round. Um, Xavier Gonzalez or Javier Gonzalez, skills books spread out the new world. If I get one, I learn the skill that the books has. So that's a bit like the knowledge power technique again, you guys. Everyone loves the knowledge. Good on you for having sharp minds. Learning skills and techniques from books. Skills, books and deeds. Harambe the gorilla, rest in peace. I would want the ability to shapeshift because I could shift into someone with lots of power or magic that I would want and have their power. Careful, bro. And or girl. Because um, shapeshifting and taking on people's forms in loads of um, comics, anime and manga doesn't necessarily mean you take on their powers and special abilities. So that might not quite work out. Obviously, it's your power. Like, you can just say that it does work, and I'll believe you. But have a think about it. Um, when the suck was too lit, <laughs> the enemy that you're mentioning is Keijo. Yeah, loads of Keijo knowledge going through. But, oh, my God, we're only about two-thirds of the way from your comments, and I'm going to have to wrap it up soon. Okay, let's speed some more of your things, guys. We're going to go into a power round. Cristiano... <laughs> not if I ruin your names. Crisanto Sedia says, Is your audio on this video not live? Like... Or drawing your talking, because I hear at the beginning you tap your cup of coffee, but the video is not. Indeed, you're correct. I used to do it so that it was all one thing. I was drawing and talking. This isn't going to be a power round at all. Um, and I think the first one to ten episodes of a DWM, that's exactly what we did. But it turns out the more that I talk, the less I draw. The more that I draw, the less I talk, which isn't really a problem. You guys are cool with it. But the problem is, is that as the channel's grown and this series is getting more and more popular, I've got more and more comments to get through. And I simply, if I'm drawing, I wouldn't read half the comments that I managed to read now. So I had to change the format. So I still fill in the sketchbook and do what I want. But this is a dedicated bit of me sitting down pretty much just after I finished drawing. I put the sketchbook back on a shelf. I put the videos into Windows Movie Maker or something like that. Oh, where it's kind of... In fact, I'm going to stop answering your questions because all the files have done their thing so now i just need to actually tell this to render it all into one great big file you have to do loads of video rendering stuff in the background to get all these episodes out i'll give you a how i make i'll do a thing one day about how i make all my videos just in case it helps you guys out we're going to call this combined i've just got to let that do its own thing in the background see i'm not a professional so i don't skip all the bits where i stop talking to you guys and start doing my own thing Lovely. That's now doing its own thing. Anyway, what was I saying? So, yeah, um, I now do it separately. Fill in the sketchbook, get my drawing done, focus on that, and then separately read through your comments and answer them and see what's going on. And what's useful there is because if you guys start talking about stuff in the comments, I get to um, look at it online and sort of find out about stuff. I've got loads of tabs open from today's episode already, um, which I couldn't do if I was trying to just get the drawing out of the way. But we've got other drawing things where I'll be drawing and talking in the future in the Pipeworks. Raymond Zamurai says, Mikey, we also need male body tutorials. Oh, you son of a bitch. Just drink this tea. Bursting for a wee. Mm. I'm starting to draw right now, starting from Shonen, male body, but I'm watching female body tutorials. Done while watching it, it refreshes me and to motivate me back into drawing. Hope you do males in the future. I will, don't worry. <laughs> Daniel FR says, hey, Mikey. Hello, Daniel. What pens do you use? Oh, <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> What pens do you use for this and other videos? Drinking this tea. I, you know, I think some of these comments are completely innocent, but these are all take a sip of tea comments. Unbelievable. I use some pens. I'll, I'll tell you another time, dude. I'm sorry to ignore your comment, but there's, there's pens. Black Mitsubishi ones. That's what's going on at the moment. Ink gel rollable pens. They're not actually developed for art. They're just gel office pens. But because they have such a deep dark line, they're really good to use for this particular series because all my line work then comes up really clearly on the camera phone. King Justico says, I'm still learning from your guideline tutorial, Mikey. My question is, is it natural doing it? And are you still using guidelines to make your drawings accurately defined? Uh, yeah, I use a lot of guidelines. Absolutely. Sometimes I don't build up with a framework that I used to start from that I do in a lot of tutorials. Sometimes I will just draw the character straight away in pencil and then amend bits that do or don't look white don't do or don't look right i'll change it in pencil i won't necessarily draw all the basic shapes because i kind of understand a lot of where they're supposed to go now not perfectly but i don't have to go through the whole process and the point is use the basics but as you get more used to it you might find you don't need to anymore you just get very used to the natural shape of your character's face or what you're going to do or where you're going to put things 
Um, so it's all about guiding points. It's really just rails to set you off in the right direction. But after that, you take the uh, path yourself. Um, and then once I've done all that pencil editing and so on, then I drop on an ink layer once I'm happy with it. Elliot Johansson says, you're talking about how you were tired. Made me think of when I went to Thailand. That's weird. I hadn't slept for over 30 hours. And when we got there, but it was in the middle of the day there, we decided to take a short nap before exploring the hotel. Around 30 minutes after going to bed, I woke up completely unaware of where everyone was, even though two of my friends were sleeping in the same room. My first logical thought was that they had left me. So I decided to go look for them. I walked around the hotel, probably looking like a zombie for about half an hour before I fell asleep on a couch by some stairs close to the lobby. Around three hours later, my friends found me after having woken up with me being gone and searching the entire hotel for me. Fuck it, hell, mate. Just wanted to share that story for no apparent reason, except you telling us you were tired. Yeah, so I was really tired uh, yes, last week when I did the last one. And I share that shit because there's no secrets here. Oh, and the magic thingy, I like the concept of learning anything super quickly as well. So you'll just go with that. Probably help in your normal, fairly boring life. Nothing wrong with a fairly boring life. It's worth more than you think. Um, yeah, yeah, I know the feeling you're getting at, man. That whole, like, when you're just really, like, fucked off of the back of really weird time zones and really weird travel and you wake up in a really weird space on a different part of the world of a completely different, like, weather and tropics and humidity, like, you can just be fucked and you just have no idea what's going on for a bit. It takes you a while to kind of come back round. I absolutely know that feeling. I'm not going to go into it now because we literally haven't time. This is going to be our last question. I'm so sorry, my friend. Um, but uh, yeah, like I had a not sleeping for 70 odd hours kind of thing once when I first ever went to Japan because I fucked up and then something else fucked up. And then <laughs> I went for a wonder and then I got locked out of the hostel. <laughs> I had to like spend my first night in Japan ever uh, borderline sleeping rough until I found a 24 hours McDonald's. But yeah, there's, it happens to the best of us, dude. Don't you worry. Oh, go on. We can fit in one more. Sakurian says, crossover, Dead Man Wonderland and FMA. Not sure how that would play out exactly, but they both have nightmarish plots kind of thrust upon the main characters. Yeah, they do, actually. And I find they're kind of yin and yang to each other because Full Metal Alchemist is a great deal lighter on the surface, but really darker underneath. Um, whereas Dead Man Wonderland's just darker on the surface and then a kind of childlike hope underneath it. Ooh. I love that comparison, Sakorian. I do like that indeed. Plus, do you know that blood magic versus transmutation would be fucking mental? Yes! And blood magic, it's weird that, at least as far as I am in FMA, it's weird that it doesn't come up more, because you'd think there'd be... When they talk about equivalent exchange and transmutation and what they do there, you'd think blood magic would be involved more. And they do transmute people, the whole, oh, that fucked up shit with a little girl and a dog. Oh, God, I've forgotten about that. Oh, that is... You know, you're right. You're absolutely, when you talk about FMA being lighter on the surface and real dark underneath, you are spot on. That is some dark shit. Go watch FMA or read it if you guys don't know what's going on. Maybe just go straight to Brotherhood because that's a bit more um, canon, but whatever. Um, yeah, really mixed up stuff. Right, you guys. We've got to keep this under an hour as ever, otherwise it doesn't upload, it doesn't go on my phone, and it's a nightmare. Um, but thank you so much for getting all in here of your comments. There's like another whole third of the comment section. I am so sorry I didn't ma manage to scroll through and read out and sort of see what's going on. So if you guys have said stuff and I'm not read it, I'm certainly going to read it after I upload this. Um, but I've just not had the opportunity to respond to it. So get in the comments again and uh, hopefully I'll catch it next time. We've just got more people getting involved all the time, which is awesome. But it just means I really have to kind of pace it through and we've got to skip a few. There's loads of lovely comments I've been seeing that and skipping as we go through to a bit shorter. Just saying really nice things and I just fucking love a lot of you as a result of it. You guys have lovely weeks. I'll see you all next time around. You're the best, basically, a lot of you. All the best to you. Take care.